Hey, Jeff, good to see you. Um, what are your early impressions uh, of your new teammates and being in the gym with them? I know training camp hasn't actually started yet, uh, but we've heard a lot of you guys are, are already getting after it. Yeah, it's been great. Last couple of days have been amazing. Um, you know, we're a talented team, guys who can play multiple positions. Uh, can do a lot of things out there on the floor. Uh, we have a lot of talent. Um, and it's great to be around. Um, you know, we have good character guys, guys who are going to work hard. Everybody stays out there and get extra work. So that's at a plus. Um, but, you know, we have a really talented team. Chris Dempsey, Altitude Sports. Hey, Jeff, um, you just mentioned that the team is talented. What's the ceiling for this basketball team? Uh, it's very high. It's very high. Um, you know, I love where we're at. I love, you know, the communication that we that we have every day. You know, we, we talk amongst each other as far as how we can help each other out. And, you know, I, I love what we have. I love, you know, I'm a, I think I'm going to love the, you know, the season that we're going to have. Uh, and I don't, I don't mind everybody talking about, you know, the Lakers and all those guys. We fly right on the radar and do what we have to do. Uh, we'll be in a good position at the end of the year. Joel Rush, Forbes. Hey, Jeff. Uh... You uh, have played with Austin Rivers and Aaron Gordon uh, before and uh, Jermichael Green as well. Have you had a chance to reconnect with those guys? And uh, does that help you bridge the continuity into joining a new team? Yeah, it helps bridge uh, continuity easily. Um, by already knowing them personally off the court, knowing what they can do on the court. Um, and to answer the first part, uh, I've talked to them, you know, when I signed, I talked to Aaron right away. Um, I've, I've always been in contact with Austin. I've talked to Jermichael. So we, we've had a good conversation as far as what we can do. And, you know, we were all ready to work, ready to get together and, you know, get, get, with, get with each other and, uh, you know, get this started. Ashley Neville, Mile High Sports. Hey, Jeff, good to see you. Um, so I'm doing an article on, you know, health and wellness in the NBA and for you in particular, I was able to talk with Seth, Andy, uh, Raul, a couple guys that I know that you've been working with extensively, yeah. um, with, when it comes to diet and training, um, how did you re like connect with those guys? How important was it for you to find the right fit? And like, how did you go about that? And do you feel that how you eat um, is, a, is directly correlated with how long you've been able to, to last in the league and also stay extremely healthy the way that you have? I give a lot of credit to my parents. They gave me great genes uh, <laughs> to go out there and to perform uh, the longevity. Um, God, God has blessed me, you know, with, you know, to go out there each year and, you know, to stay healthy and continue to play this game. Um, the connection with all those, those guys that you mentioned, um, you know, they come from mutual friends, like Raul, my chef in Miami, came from um, my connection with Lonzo Morton uh, when I moved down to Florida. Uh, Seth being, you know, somebody who's close, you know, from, we're from almost the same area. Um, I've seen his work from afar. He's worked with a couple of friends of mine. And he was somebody who, when we first met, we had a great conversation and, you know, we just clicked. Uh, Andy Luas is, uh, you know, he's an amazing trainer down in Miami. Um, ever since day one, I met him through uh, a friend of mine when I moved to Florida as well when I was looking for a trainer. And our connection on and off the court has been great. Um, he's been somebody who's, you know, helped me maintain the strength and the durability of my body to make sure that, you know, each season I've, I've been ready, you know, going into camp. Uh, in Remy, uh, somebody who I've had a, a long relationship with. Uh, I met him through Keon Dooling. And, you know, we developed a, a great brotherhood. Um, my relationship has grown tremendously throughout the years. And, you know, th those group of guys, you know, obviously they they always been in contact with each other based on, you know, how they can help me get better. And that's what it's all about. It's about a family, family atmosphere. And, you know, all those guys have bought into you know, trying to make me better. So I can't take all the credit of those guys have played a big part in, you know, me being in the position I'm in today. Ryan Blackburn for Stiffs. Hey, Jeff, good to see you. Uh, I know over the, la the last couple of years, you you've been on some really good teams and, and that, that have gone deep into the playoffs. And 
uh, last year you spent time at the four and the five, but you also defended point guards a, a lot of the time. Um, what have you learned, do you think, over the course of your career and over the course of the last couple seasons in the playoffs about defensive versatility and how important that is just for being the best playoff team you can be? Very important. I think when you have a good group of guys who can defend multiple positions, um, it makes makes it tough for the offense. Um, makes it easy for our coach uh, to put guys out there who's going to um, want to defend, and we have that here. Um, and you know, throughout the years, I've been blessed to you know have some you know a good group of guys every year uh, that's going to go out there and just play for each other. And you know, the same this year. So I'm excited for what we have. Um, you know, we have the personnel that can defend any kind of lineup, you know, that's thrown at us. So uh, that's that's what it's about, you know, putting together a good group of guys, character guys who want to go out there and just play for each other and play hard. Chris Marlowe, Altitude Sports. Hey, Jeff. How's it going? How you doing? Um, your three-point shooting has improved dramatically. Uh, a couple of seasons ago, you went to 35% and then last year, 41%. Can you tell us uh, how you would evaluate your improvement? What have you done to get to a, the elite level, which I, I believe is 40, 40%? It's like I can be elite. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm working my way. Um, but it's just been, you know, constant um, hard work, the, uh, the time. I credit my wife. My wife is... You know, she's been great in that that area for me has allowed me to just spend time and uh, have to, I, of course I have to sacrifice time away from them, but she's allowed me to go in and work on my craft um, every day. And, you know, um, and that's that's the result. Um, I, like I said, I have great people around me who who's there for me and they push me to be better. And, you know, I just put in the work, uh, you know, it's just, it was just hard work. I've adapted to the way the game is changing. And I just tried to be the best person I can be, the best player I can be. And, you know, that's the result of the hard work and, the, you know, me adapting to what the NBA is today. Harrison Wynn, DNVR. Hey, Jeff, coming over from Brooklyn, is there a different vibe or a different feel that you pick up with Denver? compared to the Nets, like you said, coming over to a team kind of that's flying under the radar compared to one that, you know, goes into the season as as a title favorite? Well, I, I use flying under, under the radar because, you know, on ESPN, every network, everybody's talking about, you know, the Lakers and Nets. That's why I use flying under the radar. In my mind, I don't think we're going to fly under the radar. I think people are going to know, you know, what we have and how lethal we can be. Um, but as far as uh, the atmosphere, is it different? No, because we understand what we have and we know what we're capable of doing if we are all on the same page. Um, you know, when I was in Brooklyn, we knew what we had and we knew what we were capable of doing. Obviously, injuries played a big part in what we were trying to accomplish last year. Um, and, you know, this year, you know, I believe everybody has the same mentality of knowing, you know, the personnel that we have and what we're capable of doing. We have a championship team. And I think if we go out there and we play hard and, you know, each month or, you know, each game, we continue to get better and better and better. Uh, we'll be where we want to be at the end of the year. Christo Saltes, SDNA Greece. Hey, Jeff, hope you're doing well. What is the ceiling of that team from your perspective and how you vision your role in the team on and off the floor? Uh, I think the ceiling is very high. I think we have a great team that can, you know, push to win a championship in my role, um, whatever Coach Malone tells me to do. Um, I'm out here to, to go out there and play hard for my teammates, you know, try to make plays when I can and, you know, just play hard. Um, you know, we, I don't think I have to do a lot with giving the personnel. I just got to go out there and be myself and, you know, contribute any way I can. Joel Rush, Forbes. Jeff, you reportedly were drawing interest from any number of contenders in free agency, but what was it about the Nuggets organization that made that an attractive choice for you? The locker room, the locker room in front office. Um, when you're not part of, when you're the outside looking in, 
of course you hear about like what teams go through um, the personnel that they have in the locker room. And, you know, from now outside looking in from my perspective, this organization, the players that were here, it was, you know, egoless team. They play hard, they play for each other. The environment is always good. Front office is the, the rep is good. So, you know, having a chance to be a part of that, that's what you look for. I mean, the older you get, you know, you want to alleviate all nonsense. You want to alleviate all, you know, negative energy. Um, you come into a situation and coming into this situation, you know, I felt it was all positive. It was all good energy. So, you know, it was a, it was a no brainer for me to, you know, you know, sign on that line and, you know, come here and be a part of it. We got time for one more. We're going to end with Ashley Neville from Mile High Sports. Hey, Jeff. So I wanted to follow up. Um, also, when I spoke with Andy, he said that you eat extremely clean. Um, even when you're having like a cheat meal, it's still pretty much clean. Has this always been something for you or has it changed over the years where you really started taking your diet um, seriously, like a bit more seriously. And, um, if you can maybe give me a rundown of what you're eating throughout the day, I'd be really interested to hear about that too. I'm not giving away my secrets, Ashley. I want to know a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it changes. I got older. I mean, this, as you get older, you, you can't eat the same way. Um, you came when I came really when I was 20. So me going to McDonald's after the game, can't be done you know it, it it doesn't fit well with my body anymore um but so you know over the years you know with the best that I've had um you know the learning experience of understanding my body um, I had to change a little bit uh, I mean I still eat good but it's it's just healthier um it's just healthier and it, it, it's helped it's helped it's helped me um with the energy uh each day going out to work out um, to prepare for a game and uh you know when that happens you got to keep it that way so um it's been good for me so hopefully it, it continues to be good for me and i continue to to do what i can do on the floor that's all you get that'll do it thank you jeff yeah, no problem take care